Lawrence here from Lonely Sleep. Got an interesting case here to share with you. Is a CT scan of a 52 year old lady who unfortunately was found to have a right side of lung mass after presenting with cough. Here's the CT scan, just scanning down through the chest and to the right upper lobe here. You can see here is a large mass centered around the right upper lobe. Here's the anterior segment and the posterior segment. If you look at those airways, they seem to course around the lesion rather than in it. There may be an endobronchial abnormality just in there, in the subsegment of the posterior segment. As we go further down into the middle lobe, you can see this is bronchus intermedius here, and we'll come down to the right middle lobe. And the right middle lobe comes off here, and I think the right middle lobe segments look quite clear actually. And just coming back to the apical segment of the right lower lobe. Here's the apical segment here coming off posteriorly, and this has three branches. There's the C branch, and the B branch here looks as if that comes to an abrupt dead end. So there may actually be an endobronchial lesion there. And the bronchoscope can probably reach to about here, so we may see that. So we'll have a careful look there. So this mass is quite big. Measure it there at uh, 5.3 centimetres. Let's have a look at the mediastinal windows. Here we can see the central trachea, and it looks like there may be an abnormal lymph node here in the right paratracheal lymph node space. This is in the superior 4R position because it's below the top of the arch of the aorta and where the brachiocephalic vein comes across. If you go down further, there's no other lymph nodes in the the lower right paratracheal and there's certainly no lymph nodes in the left paratracheal station. Once again we can see the mass here which is heterogeneous, lobulated, some spiculated edges. And once again we can see this bronchus here which is RB6B comes to an abrupt end so there may be an endobronchial lesion. You know, we've got the PET scan here, and if we just scroll through the PET scan, you can see here that this superior right paratracheal lymph node is intensely FDG avid. It certainly looks like a lymph node metastasis. The main mass is certainly FDG avid, consistent with the primary lung cancer. But once again, there are no left side of the paratracheal lymph nodes there at all, no left hyalur lymph nodes. So it'll be interesting to correlate these findings with the bronchoscopic images when that's performed for staging and also for diagnosis. So here we are in the trachea performing the bronchoscopy. There's the main carina. Go across to the right main bronchus. Look into the right upper lobe. Here's the right upper lobe here. It looks like these airways are clear. No obvious endobronchial lesion there. And the airways are a patent. Go, come back into the bronchus intermedius and go into the right middle lobe. The right middle lobe, as we expected from the CT, is clear, no endobronchial lesion there. No abnormal secretions. Now let's have a look in the lower lobe. This is the apical segment which we're interested in. And there's the C bronchus off to the right and the B bronchus in front of us, and there is an endobronchial lesion. Looks like an endobronchial tumour sitting there within that subsegment of the apical right lower lobe or RB6. So we can biopsy that endobronchially. Just have a quick look into the lower lobes, make sure that we're not going to miss anything else. Quickly across to the left lung, the left main bronchus, left upper lobe, left upper lobe proper, into the apical segment and the posterior segment, anterior segment and the lingula. A quick look into the lower lobe, apical segment, and now the basal segments of the lower lobe, and they all look clear. So you can see there's an endobronchial lesion in that apical segment of the right lower lobe, which we can target the endobronchial biopsy. So here we are with the biopsy forceps. And we're just going to relocate that endobronchial lesion, take some biopsies to get a lot of tissue for ancillary testing as well as diagnostics. The first biopsy is always the easiest because once you take your first biopsy, there's always a little bit of bleeding. Here you can see we've got quite a big biopsy there. You can remove that. There's hardly any bleeding, but it's just a little bit of bleeding, as you'd expect. Now we're performing the E-bus, we're back in the trachea, and we're just going to do mediastinal staging. 
This is looking at the 4L, or the left paratracheal lymph node station. That was the aorta, and the, on the left is the pulmonary artery. There was no lymph node in 4L, which is a good sign. Let's go across to that 4R, or the right paratracheal, and there you can see an enlarged, quite rounded lymph node. Deep to that is the superior vena cava running longitudinally along the trachea. So we'll certainly have to sample that lymph node. Now we'll just go down into the right lung, into the right hilum. On the ultrasound you can see that there's a large mass there. There's a branch of the pulmonary artery coming across in front of it, but you can certainly identify an area where that mass just there is very large and right up against the airway where we can certainly place a needle into that. So we'll be able to biopsy the lesion through eBus TBNA as well for additional tissue. Here we are with the needle now. We're back to that 4R lymph node station. Just about to place the needle into that lymph node. As the needle goes in, it pushes the ultrasound image away, so you lose the image momentarily. But there you can see the needle within the, the on site cytology and from the 4R lymph That's the endobronchial on site cytology of that sample that we took.